Hi, I'm Gio Herrera and thank you for watching my YouTube channel Gio's Avaya How To. This video is part 2 of deploying Avaya System Manager 7. In our first video, we deployed Avaya System Manager 7 onto a VMware 6.5 environment. Then we added our Session Manager to our System Manager host file. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure System Manager 7 post VMware deployment. We are going to use our data migration utility software to restore System Manager 6.2 backup configuration onto our System Manager 7.1. Then we're going to install mandatory patch ending in 6654. And then we're going to install mandatory patch 1 ending in 6823. And finally, we're going to install System Manager Service Pack 3, Feature Pack 3 to get our System Manager to the latest 7.1 software. As mentioned before, on the left hand side is the software we will use today. If you would like to find out how to download the software, take a look at part 1 of deploying Avaya System Manager 7. On the right hand side are the tools that we will need to perform these tasks and they are WinSCP, PuTTY or Remote NG, and a web browser. Let's start by opening our WinSCP application and let's get connected to our System Manager. Click on New Site. Under File Protocol, ensure the protocol you have chosen is the SFTP. Under Hostname. Put the IP address of your system manager. Under port number, ensure that you have chosen port number 22. Under username, put in the username and password of your system manager. Then click save to save your connection. Under site name, name your connection. I'm going to name mine geo smgr test 2. I'm also going to save my password and click OK. Now I'm ready to log in. So I'm going to click on the login button. Under the authentication banner, I'm going to click on never show this again. And then I'm going to click on continue. You should now be logged into your system manager. On the right hand side of the window pane, that's your system manager directory. And you'll notice that you're logged in under the home admin CLI directory. We're going to change this directory to the root SW library directory. On the left hand side, this is your PC directory and navigate to where your system manager software is stored. I'm already there. For this tutorial, I'm going to migrate all of the software that we're going to use today, which is the patches, the data migration utility software, and my backup software, or excuse me, my backup. I have highlighted all of the software that I'm going to migrate to system manager. I'm going to click on it and drag it over to the SW library directory. As you can see below, the software has started to migrate over. The files have finished migrating over to our system manager and we can now close our WinSCP application. Open up your PuTTY application or your mRemote ng application. Next, log into your system manager via SSH. When you first log in, you will be under the home directory of admin CLI. Change your directory to the SW library directory by typing the command cd space forward slash SW library. Then hit enter. Next, type the command ls space minus l and hit enter. This will display the contents of your SW library directory and you will see the software that we just migrated over. You have the data migration utility software, you have your old system manager backup, and then you have the three system manager patches that we will be installing today. We are now ready to restore our configuration from backup and install our patch. And in order to do this, we're going to use the data migration utility. Under the SW library directory, we're going to type upgrade capital S M G R space forward slash SW library for slash the data migration utility software space minus M space minus V then hit enter. You will be asked for your admin CLI password. Enter it and then hit enter. Now it's asking you for the full location of your system manager backup file. We're going to type forward slash SW library forward slash then the backup file name then hit enter. Now it's asking you the location of your mandatory patch. So we're going to type forward slash SW library forward slash and then I'm going to highlight my mandatory patch and then hit right click. This will copy over the file and then I'm going to hit enter. At this point it's checking the patch release version. The patch has been successfully validated. Now it's asking us if we are sure we want to run the data migration. We're going to click on yes. 
and then hit enter. And the restore and patch installation process has started. To check the progress of the patch installation and backup restoration, type cat space, copy this link here by highlighting it and then right click and then hit enter. That particular command will give you a status of the backup restoration process and also of the patch installation. Please note, in my previous videos, I mentioned that the newly deployed system manager virtual host name needed to match the virtual host name of your old system manager if you were going to restore from backup. And that is correct. But in case you forgot to do that during the OVA deployment, during the data migration utility restore process, the software will run the necessary scripts to change the virtual host name of your newly deployed system manager to match your old system manager virtual host name. Once again, in order to update the host name of your newly deployed system manager post configuration restoration, you're going to need to contact Avaya to help you run the necessary scripts to update and change the name of your host name to your desired virtual host name. At this point, the restore process and patch installation has been kicked off and it's going to take about three hours for this process to complete. Restoring System Manager 6.2 backup configuration onto our newly deployed System Manager 7.1 and applying the mandatory patch has completed. Next, I'm going to ensure the patch was installed successfully by checking the software version. To check the software version, type SW version, then hit enter. Then we're going to scroll up. And as you can see, the patch number and the latest build number are the same. They both end with 116654. Next, I'm going to log on to System Manager via a web browser to see if my configuration was successfully restored from backup. I'm going to use Firefox and on my address bar, I'm going to type HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of my system manager forward slash capital S MGR, then hit enter. This will take me to the logon screen. Now the first time you log on to your system manager after doing a restoration is going to ask you to change your password. So I'm going to click on change password and put my old login ID, which is admin. And then I'm gonna put my current, my old or current password. I'm going to choose a new password. Then I'm going to click on save. And my password was successfully changed. So now I'm gonna go back to my primary login. And I'm going to re-log in or log in. Since I haven't installed a license on my system manager, I'm getting this li license error message. Just click OK. And this first part was positive because A, I was able to change my password using my old credentials from my system manager 6.2 configuration. And I'm going to uh, click on their session manager, see the data that I expect to see. Um, and this is fine because I don't have my session managers connected to my system manager yet. But I do see what I'm expecting to see, which is three session managers here. So, so far it looks like the restoration of our backup configuration has been successfully restored. I'm gonna take a quick look at my users and so far everything looks good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and log off of our system manager and we'll proceed to installing the next patch, which is mandatory patch one ending in 6823. I'm back at the CLI screen and we're going to change directories and go to the SW library directory. I'm going to type cd space forward slash sw library hit enter. Then I'm going to list the contents ls space minus l. And this time we're going to install patch one, system manager 7.1 patch one ending with 6823, which is this one right here. In order to do that, I'm going to type the following command, which is capital S, capital M, G, R, capital P, patch, deploy. And then I'm going to type the full path where the path is located at, which is forward slash SW library forward slash then the patch. Then I'm going to hit enter. It's going to ask me for my admin CLI password. Now it's going to verify the patch. Then we're going to press enter to read the license terms. And then I'm hit space to complete. Do you accept the Avaya software license terms? I'm going to type Y for yes and hit enter. And now it's going to go ahead and install the patch. This next process is going to take about 45 minutes. So go ahead and take a break and uh, I'll see you back in 45 minutes. The mandatory patch 16823 has finished installing 
and I have logged into System Manager via SSH and the first message I get is to reboot System Manager because the patch has updated the kernel. Before I reboot, I'm going to check the log first to see how long it took to install the patch and whether it was successful or not. To do this, I'm going to change directory and I'm going to type cd space forward slash var forward slash log forward slash Avaya with a capital A, enter. And I'm gonna list the contents by typing ls space minus L. And I'm going to look for the smgr underscore patch log. And then I'm going to view the contents by typing cat space smgr underscore patch dot log. As I scroll to the top to see at what time we started our patch installation, it tells me that we started at around 4.25, and then the patch successfully finished at 4.48, so it took about 20, 23 minutes, 25 to 23 minutes to uh, complete. This was a lot faster than installing the first patch and uh, restoring the configurations from uh, backup. Uh, next, I'm going to check the software version by typing SW version. And as you can see, our new patch number is 116823 and it matches the latest build as well. Next we're going to reboot our system manager. There are two ways you can reboot system manager. One is via the user interface and two by using the VMware console. Since I have access to the VMware console I'm going to go ahead and use it to reboot my system manager. I've logged on to my VMware console and I'm going to go ahead and power off my VM. Now that it's powered off I'm going to go ahead and power it back on. System Manager has finished rebooting. I'm going to go ahead and log on via the SSH. As you can see, the reboot message is gone and the kernel changes have been updated. Next, I'm going to go ahead and install the last patch, which is patch 7.1.3.3. And first, I'm going to change directories and go to the SW library directory. So I'm going to type cd space forward slash SW library, enter. Now I'm going to list my contents by typing ls space minus l. Next, I'm going to type the uh, patch deployment command, and that is capital S M G R P patch deploy space four slash sw library four slash and the patch. I'm going to highlight the patch and right click to copy it. And then I'm going to hit enter. Next, it's going to ask me for my admin CLI password. And I'm going to go ahead and type it in. It's going to verify the patch. Now that it's done verifying the patch, it's asking me to read the Avaya software license terms by pressing enter. And then I'm going to press the space bar to scroll down through the license agreement. Next, it's going to ask me to accept the license terms. I'm going to type Y for yes. Next, it's asking me if I want to proceed with the installation. I'm going to type Y for yes. And now the software patch installation will begin and the process will take about 45 minutes to an hour or less. The last patch took about, as I mentioned, it took about 23 minutes to complete. So this one might go fast as well. The patch has been successfully installed. Now I'm going to type SW version to ensure that the patch was successfully installed. And as you can see, we are now on the latest build 7.1.3.3, which is feature pack three, service pack three. Next, I'm going to exit. I'm going to log off and log back in. And as you can see, it's asking me to reboot system manager because the kernel has been updated. I'm gonna go ahead and reboot system manager via the VMware console. I've rebooted system manager and as you can see, the reboot message is now gone. Check the software version one more time. And we're running the latest build. Feature pack three, service pack three, 7.1.3.3. This completes our tutorial. Today we have restored system manager's configuration from backup. And we installed our mandatory patches along with our latest 7.1 feature pack three and service pack three. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you found it helpful. Please hit subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.